What a blessing to spend time, Lord, just communing with you. And now, Lord, we pray that your blessing will be upon us as we uh, study the word, that you'll open our hearts, Lord, to understanding and to the grasping of truth. We commit now, Lord, your word unto the work of your spirit, that he would apply it to our hearts, to the needs in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Tonight we start the book of 2 Chronicles, but we will start it in chapter 10, in as much as the first nine chapters are taken up pretty much with just genealogies and um, just a lot of names that uh, you can't really pronounce and uh, they just uh, don't do much for us. So uh, we uh, will start with chapter 10. It is the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah. And of course, uh, Saul was the first and so it will begin in chapter 10 with some of the battles uh, that Saul had against the Philistines. And uh, so this morning, we are going to go back into the first 10 chapters. Our text is found in chapter 4 of 1 uh, Chronicles, uh, chapter 4, verse 9. And uh, here we have a man who as they are listing the names of the descendants of Judah, suddenly this man's name appears in the records. And uh, just as suddenly as it appears, it disappears. But rather than just giving us his name, it gives us some salient information about him. And uh, He's not mentioned anywhere else in Scripture. We don't know any more about him than what we know in these two verses, verses 9 and 10. But we find that uh, we learn quite a bit about him in these two verses. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. His mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Enlarge my coast, that your hand might be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. We know from the text that he was probably the son of cause, and he was more noble than his other brothers, more honorable. His mother called him Jabez, which in Hebrew means sorrow or grief, because she said, I bore him in sorrow. It could be that uh, she had a difficulty with the pregnancy, that it was a hard pregnancy. It could be that it was a hard delivery that caused her to name him Jabez. It could be that his father died before he was born, so that uh, there was the sorrow that she bore the child, the husband was dead. We don't know what would inspire her to tack a name like grief on your boy. Uh, and yet uh, he was, uh, had to bear that name of grief uh, because of the grief of the pregnancy or the delivery of his mother. We know concerning Jabez that he was a man of prayer. He called upon the God of Israel. I think that prayer is greatly misunderstood by the majority of people. I think that somehow we've got the idea that 
prayer is a marvelous means that God has provided whereby we can have anything that we want, uh, whereby we can just sort of write our own tickets. I think that prayer is not getting my will done, but the purpose is getting God's will done. It is a means that God has provided whereby I can cooperate with God in the accomplishing of his purposes here on earth. Never is the intent of my will being done, but of God's will being done. You see, God doesn't exist for my pleasure, nor does he exist to obey my bidding. I exist for God's pleasure, and I exist to do his bidding. Now, I am very aware of many wonderful promises that were given to us, especially by Jesus concerning prayer. Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty four, Therefore I say unto you, whatever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. In Matthew 21, 22, he said, And all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. In John 14, 13, he said, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. John 15, 7, he said, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. John 16, 23, and in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. Wonderful, wonderful promises that are given to us in prayer. But, we need to observe to whom those promises were given. Jesus wasn't talking to the multitudes of people when he gave these promises of prayer. These promises were given to his disciples. And what constitutes discipleship? Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So these promises are made, first of all, to a person who has denied himself, which would mean that my prayers would not be selfish as far as motive is concerned. I've denied self. I've taken up the cross. My chief and primary interest is the work of God's kingdom. And it is to that person who has denied the self-life and has committed himself over to the kingdom of God and the work of the kingdom that God gives these glorious promises concerning our prayers. So the person who can ask whatever he wishes is a person who doesn't have wishes for himself, but more for the kingdom of God. Most of our prayers involve ourselves, our personal interest, our personal needs. But God is desiring to get my heart aligned with his purposes and his desires. I really believe that true prayer begins in the heart of God and that he puts in my heart what is on his heart. And as he puts his heart and the things of his heart on my heart, I then express them back to him in prayer, and thus the cycle is complete. It begins with God, and it returns back to God, passing through my heart. The Lord said to King Asa through the prophet, 
For the eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the entire earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are perfect towards him. So it is getting my heart in alignment with the heart of God. And when my heart is in alignment with the heart of God, it will be reflected in my prayers. And, and thus, the prayers will not be of, for selfish motiv motivations or selfish desires, uh, but will be dealing more with the purposes and the things of God. So with that in mind, as we look at the prayer of Jabez, we find that his first petition was that you would bless me indeed. You say, well, Chuck, you've just blown it. <laughs> you tell us that prayers aren't to be selfishly motivated, and the first thing the guy asks for is for blessings, and no doubt blessings upon his own life. But it is important for us to realize that God does want to bless us. God desires to bless you. In fact, in Psalm 83, or 81 rather, uh, the psalmist gives God's lament. He was lamenting the fact that he wanted to bless them, but he couldn't bless them because of the way they were living. God said, Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies. I would have turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of Jehovah would have submitted themselves unto him, and their time would have endured forever. I would have fed them also with the finest of wheat, and with honey out of the rock would I have satisfied them. God was saying, oh, I wanted to do so much for them. But they weren't listening to me. They weren't walking in my ways. And thus the blessings of God were withheld because they wouldn't listen to God or walk in the ways of God. So when I pray, Lord, bless me, then the necessary requirement for blessing is that I'm listening to God and walking in his ways. So I'm really saying, Lord, help me to hear your voice. Lord, help me to walk in your ways because that is the path of blessing. In Luke 12, 32, Jesus said, Fear not, little flock, it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Don't be afraid. God wants to bless you. But the condition is being a part of his flock. Fear not, little flock, because your father wants to give you the kingdom. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, the Lord said, It shall come to pass... If you will hearken diligently unto the voice of Jehovah your God and observe and do all of his commandments, which I command you this day, that the Lord your God will set you on high above the nations of the earth. And all of these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you will hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. You will be blessed in the city. You will be blessed in the field. Your children will be blessed. Also, the fruit of your cattle, your cows, the flocks, and your sheep will increase. You will be blessed when you come in. You will be blessed when you go out. But again, the conditions, if you will hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord, if you will observe to do his commandments, so when I am saying, Lord, bless me indeed, I'm saying, Lord, again, help me to listen attentively to your word. Lord, help me to obey your commandments. Help me, Lord, to walk in your ways, because as I do, 
then God can do for me what he longs to do, and that is to bless me. So it isn't just saying, bless me, Lord, no matter what I'm doing, how I'm living, or whatever, but Lord, bring me in the place where you can bless me. In the book of Jude, Jude, in verse 21, says, keep yourself in the love of God. What he is actually saying is, keep yourself in that place where God can do for you what he longs to do for you because he loves you. But it is possible for you to get outside of that place of blessing. It is possible for you, like the nation of Israel, to become inattentive to the voice of God, to walk in your own ways, to uh, disobey his commandments and all of the prayers for blessing will be of naught. But if you will just hearken to his voice, if you will walk in his ways, if you will observe to do the things that he has commanded, then the blessings are yours. So bless me, Lord. That is, keep me in the place of blessing. Enlarge my coast. Lord, and, and that isn't give me a bigger house and more, you know, uh, cars or whatever. Enlarge my coast. Lord, enlarge my vision. You know, so often our vision is very narrow. We, our prayers are just for our own immediate family. And, and, often do not go beyond our own immediate family. Or the prayers are for our church. And Lord, the blessing upon our church. Well, Jabez is saying, Lord, enlarge my vision. Beyond just my own family, beyond just our own church. Lord, but for the church throughout the world. And I think that we need to be praying right now for the Catholic Church with all of the uh, problems that they are facing right now. And we need to be in prayer that God will help and deliver them from uh, all of this uh, bad kind of publicity that they're getting at the present moment. We should be concerned and praying for them. Lord, enlarge my vision. Let me see the whole church the whole body of Christ, and not just that small portion of which I am a part. Lord, enlarge my coast. Give me a greater vision. And then the petition was that your hand would be with me. Lord, keep your hand on my life. Let me never stray, Lord, from you. Hold me, Lord, close to you. Hold my hand, Lord, and guide me through life. Lord, keep your hand upon me, that hand of protection, Lord. Hold me and keep me close. And then, Lord, keep me from evil. We are living in such an evil world. The natural bent of our flesh is towards evil. In the model prayer that Jesus gave to his disciples, one of the petitions was, and deliver us from evil. And I think that we need to pray that. Lord, keep me from evil. There's such the, uh, a pressure, such a tendency towards evil. He wanted to be kept from evil that it would not be a grief to him. Interesting, his name is grief. And Lord, keep me from evil lest it grieve me. Uh, I see the grief, the misery, the pain that evil brings upon people's lives. This is one of the negative aspects of the ministry. There are many, many positive aspects that far outweigh the negative aspects. 
But one of the negative aspects of the ministry is that we see oftentimes the consequences of evil in a person's life. They come, they're shattered. Their lives are broken. They are grieving, they're in pain, they are suffering as the result of dabbling with evil. And, and we see that consequence of evil in a person's life. And Jabez was wise enough to realize that if he became involved in evil, it will ultimately end in grief because you cannot get into evil without it bringing its incumbent grief and misery with it. I look at the world in which we live, and I look at all of the pain and the suffering that evil has brought to our world. Oh, what a beautiful world this could be if it weren't for evil. How wonderful our community would be if it weren't for evil. How wonderful the nation could be if it weren't for evil. And I see the suffering and the misery and the pain that evil brings. Our president spoke of the evil and how that we must stand against the evil that is in the world. And he is seeking to destroy the evil with our military might. But evil can never be conquered with guns. The Bible tells us that we must overcome evil with good. God said to the nation of Israel, ah, sinful nation, a people that is laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corrupt, you have forsaken Jehovah. Why should you be stricken anymore? You're sick. And, and, and so God, through Isaiah, talking about the nation who had given itself over to evil, to forsaking the ways of God, and, and now they have been smitten by their enemies. They are suffering pain. They're suffering misery. They're suffering grief. And God says, why should you, why should you suffer like that anymore? The answer is to turn from your evil. And so Jabez, Lord, Keep me from evil so that it won't be a grief to me. And God, there in Isaiah, as he's talking to them about the evil, he says, you just don't consider. You don't stop and think it through. The consequences of evil is always painful, hurtful. The ultimate effect of it is, is misery and grief. And so Jabez, Lord, keep me from evil that it will not be a grief to me. We read, and God granted him that which he requested. John tells us, and this is the confidence that we have in him, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if he hears us, then we have the, re the we receive the petition that we have asked of him. Asking according to the will of God. Is it God's will to bless you? Oh, yes, he wants to bless you, but there are certain necessary things to receive those blessings. You must hearken diligently to the word of God. You must walk in the ways of God. You must observe, do the things that God has commanded you to do. Enlarge my coast. Yes, God wants to enlarge your vision. He wants to bring you out of that narrow little myoptic kind of short-sightedness that we have. He wants to enlarge your vision. He wants you to see the needs of the world. And he wants you to have a heart 
that reaches out to the lost world, not just to our community, not just to our neighborhood. That's it, where it starts, but he wants to enlarge it to where it includes a burden, a desire for the whole church, the whole world. Lord, may your hand be upon me. Oh yes, it's God's will to keep his hand upon you. He said to Isaiah, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed, I am your God. I will help you, yea, but will uphold you by my right hand. God wants to keep his hand upon your life. Lord, keep me from evil. Oh yes, you can be sure that's according to the will of God. He wants us to walk in righteousness. He wants us to walk in purity. He wants us to walk in fellowship with him. And when you understand the prayer, and if you will make it your prayer, you'll find just as Jabez, the Lord will grant to you your request. Let's pray. Father, help us, we pray, to truly understand the purpose of prayer. And may we not seek to use it, Lord, as a means to gratify our own lust or desires. But may our prayers, Lord, always be for the, be for the things of the kingdom of God, your righteousness. Lord, we do pray that we will hearken diligently to your voice. That we will walk in your ways, that we will observe the things that you've commanded, that we might, Lord, indeed know the blessings of God upon our life, upon our church, upon our community. Lord, we do ask that you would Keep your hand upon our lives. Give us a broader vision. Keep us from evil. May we walk, Lord, in your ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we stand? Our pastors are standing down here at the front this morning and they are here to pray for you. To help you get into the place where God can do for you what he longs to do. God loves you. He wants to bless you. Unfortunately, like Israel, there are many of you that he can't bless. Because you're doing your own thing. You're not really in harmony with God or the purposes of God for your life. You haven't been observant to the things that God has commanded. You're not walking in his ways. And yet God longs to bless you, but the blessings are withheld. God wants to bring you into that place of blessing. And these men are down here to pray for you today that the Lord might work in your life and root the evil out of your life so that he can do the things he longs to do. God wants to give you a greater vision, enlarge your coast or your borders. God wants to keep his hand upon you and so they're here to pray for you today. And as soon as we're dismissed, I would encourage you to come forward. Spend some time in prayer. Get right with God. And you'll discover that God will begin to do the things he longs to do. And as he said, I'll bless you when you go in. I'll bless you when you come out. I'll bless every portion and every part of your life because that's what God wants to do for his children who walk in his ways and who keep his commandments. The Lord bless thee. The Lord bless thee.
On behalf of the Word for Today, the broadcast ministry of Pastor Chuck Smith, we thank you for joining us in today's broadcast. For more of Pastor Chuck's studies and biblical teaching resources, visit our website at pastorchuck.org. You can contact the Word for Today at the Word for Today, P.O. Box 890-820, Temecula, California, 92589 or email us at infopastorchuck at gmail.com. We'll return with more of our verse-by-verse -verse Bible study in our next broadcast with Pastor Chuck.